Hi everyone, this is Phil Liu from XBOsoft. Our XBO Talk seven part series will address Agile and the key solutions to most of the important software development pains related to software quality. By the end of this seven part series, you'll understand requirements and how they can impact software quality, Agile sizing and estimating and how they also impact software quality, testing from a manual point of view or using automation and what makes sense in automating, test asset management, writing test automation scripts, using quality gates, and how to develop KPIs to measure your Agile process. In this session, we're going to cover requirements. So let's first talk about the problem with requirements. The most common pain voiced within the software community is frustration caused by requirements that are not fully defined or are modified as the development process progresses. In Agile, a requirement starts vague and is refined and becomes more actionable as it progresses from concept to story and a task. Our discussion will focus on the Agile process of refining requirements through iterations. Using an analogy and building a house, there are potentially seven groups involved with creating, refining, implementing, testing, and deploying a requirement prior to it being put into production. The end users, or in this case of our analogy, homeowners, this is the group who uses the product after it's in production and the expert on whether the product is what they need and able to contribute valuable feedback on requirements. The client in our analogy is the real estate developer, the group that pulls the vision together to offer the product to end users. Business analysts, or in this case of our analogy, the realtor, is the group that acts as the liaison between this client and potentially the end users to move from concept to requirements. This group is the first line of defense on clear requirements. They need to ask specific questions such as who will be using the product, what does the final product look like, are there any risks which need to be mitigated, as well as any dependencies. Then there's the architect who provides the blueprints of the product, advises on optimal solutions for the system, and details out requirements. The role of system analysts, or in the case of our analogy, the general contractor, provides a map of internal systems and pulls together different types of expertise to take the project from inception to completion. Using our house analogy, think of electricians, plumbers, or other specialized roles. And in the case of software, this could be data architects, front-end specialists, or UX designers. System analysts will also coordinate the product build-out, but potentially not be responsible for the actual physical work. Software engineers, or the construction crew, pulls the product together in a cohesive deliverable that ends up being the complete product. In terms of the house analogy, think of components that go into creating a house, such as the foundation, frame, infrastructure, internal and external walls, windows, door, and roof. The QA team, or test engineers, test the build for compliance to requirements, verify dependencies, and ensure the product works as expected. They also verify functions, visual and performance aspects of the build, make sure that it's acceptable to the client and end users. Using the house analogy, think of verification of hurricane straps to attach the roof to the foundation. The plumbing is attached to the input and the electricity works as expected with all light switches and electrical outlets working. Now let's turn our focus to how to define and how to identify a well-formed requirement. The most common complaint about requirements is that they are changed and they are not specific enough or are open to interpretation. Let's work through some examples to show the difference between a well-defined set of requirements and requirements which may lead to confusion. Continuing with the house example, let's look at three different sets of requirements and examine what is good or bad about each set. Set number one, if you need a two-story house with three bedrooms and two bathrooms, looking at these simple requirements, they're wide open to interpretation. End users could be envisioning one style of house and the team builds their own interpretation of this house or this requirement. In agile terms, this could be the back of a napkin level type of requirements definition. For another example, think of this set of requirements, a two-story brick house, one master bedroom with an in-suite bathroom and walk-in closet, two standard bedrooms with a bathroom between, stairs from the center of the house to the second floor. 
If we take a look at this requirement and analyze it a bit, you can also see that it's better than the first requirement, but still open to a lot of interpretation. In this case, the team can still choose the style of the house. There is no definition about the layout of the first floor, window requirements, or any clear vision for the final product. In agile terms, this may be the level of requirement that the team gets to in, say, a quarterly planning session, but certainly not enough to actually build the product. Looking at a third set of requirements, as an example, we have a two-story brick house built in traditional style, a slate roof, five windows on the front wall, a solid door in the front painted with red or blue, a three to six step stoop to the front door. Our first floor has five rooms consisting of a living room, dining room, half bathroom, kitchen and study, and stairs from the first floor to the second floor. The second floor is defined as the hallway connecting rooms landing for the stairs, a master suite with bedroom, full bathroom, and walk-in closet, two standard bedrooms, full bathroom connecting the standard bedrooms, and a laundry room, and drop down stairs from the attic to the hallway. And looking at this set of requirements, the basic structure of the house is well specified. The team can start working on the product. Details for each room can be specified as the product progresses from the agile retrospective and planning ceremonies. One of the keys to successful requirements is to understand how much detail the requirements need to be in order for the team to start and how much detail is going to be added as you go forward during the planning sessions. The key to solid requirements is asking for the correct level of detail at the right time. Once the initial requirements are completed, the team needs to evaluate them for the level of detail, identifying dependencies, and understanding the order of delivery. A strong requirement has clear acceptance criteria, and acceptance criteria are used to build test cases. Acceptance criteria and tests need to answer at least one of the why, what, when, and how questions. Questions such as, why are we working on this project? What do we hope to accomplish by completing this project? What do we need to accomplish this project? What are the dependencies and risks? What is the logical order for the requirements? When does the product need to be delivered? When will resources be available and not available? How will the project be approached in terms of epics, stories, and tasks, and how will tasks be generated based on that? What level of granularity is necessary for the tasks, and how big should a task be in terms of effort before it needs to be broken down into subtasks? From a software testing point of view, testing in Agile needs to start early in the requirements phase by determining if requirements are testable. QA engineers typically review core requirements, examining for clarity and completeness, and also give feedback to project managers for requirements that don't meet these criteria. With clear, complete, and accurate requirements, QA engineers can then develop tests and test criteria for pass-fail that enable and help developers to understand the definition of done for any particular requirement from their point of view. The problem is that in order to review and provide feedback on requirements requires more than just button pushing of an existing system. Rather, QA engineers have to think from an end user point of view on what would be acceptable to the user in executing or using particular function. This requires thinking outside the normal tester box along with deep domain knowledge of the application. If, for example, the house is an accounting software package and the feature or epic being developed is account reconciliation or general ledger entry to accounts payable, then the QA engineer has to understand how an accountant thinks in order to determine if the requirement is clear and complete. Now you know one of the key advantages of XBOSoft. We're not just software testers pushing buttons. We're domain experts in a variety of disciplines with accumulated knowledge that you can take advantage of in thoroughly testing your software from start to final delivery to your end users. Please reach out to XBOSoft with questions or to request support from our talented team of experts. In the next XBO talk, we will explore agile sizing and you'll learn how to identify and define agile epics, store stories, tasks, and spikes using an agile testing approach. See you next time.